good day. It's a pleasure indeed to be here today. And as you see, you've got my special mug here that was a gift to me a couple of weeks ago. And I really appreciate it. Um, today's Thursday, the 19th of August. We go to start it off. I'm not running today for the first time since I fell a couple of weeks ago. And um, didn't get my two miles in, though. I only got a mile and a half in today because I was kind of easing into it. But... Um, I was up to uh, the orthopedic, um, Dr. Kennedy, up at the orthopedics, uh, Yakima Orthopedics, and got the okay to do that sort of thing, run, and as long as I don't fall again, I'm fine. And I'm actually, I'm more steady running than I am walking, but it is a pleasure, it's a joy to be back, at least running, and trying to run in the morning again. And this morning, when I got up and it went up running early, it was quite clear and nice, but now the smoke's coming in again, and Things are looking kind of poorly again for the for the day, but we'll see. At least it's not so hot as it was in the past here. Um, we talk about masks. Uh, we know the governor has just set aside, put them on a mandate for masking in all public places, but there's no mandate for churches. But I just want to encourage you, if you feel at all uncomfortable, please wear a mask at mass. You don't have to. And... Not, there's no mandate for that sort of thing yet, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it came down the tube pretty soon because it's recommend. No, it's ordered for any indoor uh, gatherings, um, and of course the school mandate is just open and came around. and And again, if you haven't got the um, vaccine yet, I really encourage you to get it. If not for yourself, you just get it. Get it for everybody else because we can be carriers of the um, of the pandemic, even though we don't have no symptoms. And um, I just would encourage any everyone to get the um, vaccine if you haven't done so already. I hope the mandate doesn't come down, but it, it probably, I, I presume we probably will have a mandate to wear masks. But you know, suit yourself, but just be careful and be considerate of everybody else that's joining with you in church or wherever we might be at shopping centers or wherever. The main thing is that we're prudent and we think of others. Um, that's, that's the Christian way, the Catholic Christian way to think about others and what we can do to protect them from um, uh, getting sick. I don't want to be a carrier of any disease. We wear masks, as you know, when we distribute communion not because we're afraid of you, but we don't, we don't want to be, have you afraid of us. We come in such close contact with you when we distribute the host at communion. Um, so um, just be prudent, and if you, if you feel more comfortable masked, please come masked. Don't, um, don't stay away. But if you have any symptoms or you're sick, please don't come to church either because you are excused and you will be excused at any time when we're sick and could be carriers of a disease as well as having a disease ourselves. I'm sure you've read and you've been concerned about the tragedy of Haiti with the earthquake they just underwent last week. Um, terrible tragedy, thousands of lives lost. Uh, people that are living out in the streets and, and outside and pouring rain because they had the remnants of an earthquake or at least a tropical storm down there. At the same time, it's just, you feel so sorry for all those people who are hurting. And um, also the tragedy of Afghanistan. You know, there's very, very few Christians, uh, Catholics there in, in Afghanistan. I don't, I'm not even sure there's a diocese that, in, somewhere there's down there's a diocese, but I'm not sure there is one of, of, uh, in Afghanistan. But we do have a couple of Jesuit priests working down there, and I just checked the website this morning, and they're really concerned for their work and their lives after they have to uh, evacuate the area too. But it's such a mess there with evacuations and trying to get people out, and all those people who have helped us over the last 20 years in the war, the Afghan people, and the prospect of losing the privileges that they had and the rights that they had for so many years. Um, we just have to keep them, we have to keep them in our prayers and and um, there's really no direct way to help them as through the church in Afghanistan, but 
we can't help people in Haiti. Uh, Catholic Relief, Relief Services is doing a great job helping the poor people of Haiti who don't have homes, who don't have places to stay, who don't have anything. They've lost everything in the, in the recent earthquake. So be concerned about them. They're part of our human family too. We can't limit our concern merely to people that we know, people that live in our community. The world is, is part of the kingdom of God too, the whole world. And we need to be concerned when our brothers and sisters are hurting in other parts of the world, not just here. So keep them in your prayers. Saturday we have a funeral mass for a button pat step wagon. Um, they were mainstays of our parish here for so many years. And um, at 10 o'clock we're having that funeral this Friday. I don't know if you'll have, this video might not be ready by then, but at least you'll know that, um, that this is happening. And keep them in your prayers too. And then Monday, we have a, a funeral from uh, Margaret Gordon, who's the mother of um, uh, Sarah Wazinski, one of our great cantors, and uh, the wife of our, of our deacon. Um, it's a, more of a private celebration, but you want to keep them and all the people who have died in your prayers. There's so many of them we're trying to catch up now with funerals that we couldn't have a year ago or longer. And um, that's what we're doing this time. Same way with baptisms. We've got a real backlog of baptisms we have to do, but there's only so many times we can do them. Um, if you want, most people want them on Saturdays and Sundays. Well, we have quinceaneras and weddings on Saturdays, and there's only a certain small time in there that we can have baptisms. Although we are baptizing again at Sunday Mass, and uh, if you prefer to do that, we are open to that. So um, I know I've got a backlog of calls to make for people who want their children baptized, and I'm, I'm getting to them as quickly as I can. Uh, Valerie Means, Val, uh, our uh, kind of assistant to, to our, our office manager here, and does a lot of quiet things. She fell and broke her um, hip the other day, a couple of days ago, which she was operating on yesterday, I believe. And um, I haven't had a chance to talk to her yet, And but she's in the hospital. She's gonna be out of, out of really service for a, a while because of the recuperation that's required. And she's also, keep her in your prayers. Um, Valerie's a very special person for our parish and she does an awful lot of behind the scenes work. And um, we really are indebted to her for a great many things. By the way, if anyone wants to volunteer to kind of fill in for the work that she does, and it's putting baptism records, um, putting them into the record books and marriages and arranging for our mail, out, mail outs uh, every month. Um, if you want to volunteer, if anybody's willing to help, just give the office a call, give Denny a call. Um, you know the number, 575-3713. Religious education, again, is re they're registering this Sunday. It's the last public registration we're gonna have. You can always call Emma at her office or stop in there in the uh, school building, in the east end of the school building. But um, if you wanna have your children come to these classes, we mentioned last week that the responsibility but training them in the faith is yours, parents, but we have been here to help you. And we have a marvelous, a wonderful program and dedicated teachers and staff. And we need more teachers, by the way, for religious education classes. We need also more people to help with the Life Teen and the Spy Edge groups, the middle school and high school group, volunteers that will come and help supervise and plan uh, occasions for them to meet and also teachers for the grade school religious education classes. If you, if you uh, can volunteer to serve at the grade school, uh, call Emma uh, at, a, at the parish number. And if you, if you want to feel an urge, I hope you do, to help with the high school or, or middle school, give Sean Exner a call here at the office. Uh, they'd be delighted to hear from you. And we need you. 
You know, the fires are still existing. We Today I mentioned that smoke is really bad. Today it's coming in again very strongly. We thought the other day when the wind came up that um, would blow the smoke away, but it blew the smoke in to us. And we've had a couple of days of really strong smoke. And today is going to look like one of those two, at least right now. Um, I'm concerned also for the people that have homes and cabins up in that um, Bumping Lake area and also along Highway 410. Um, and one of those is out in Joanne Marsh. But I know many of you have summer cottages up there in that area and we are concerned for you and we pray for the firefighters who put themselves in danger and really it's a precarious work that they undertake for us. Uh, and we're so indebted to them too. We have so many people to whom we're indebted for so much that we don't even know. And um, among those are the firefighters that are fighting that um, Schneider, Schneider Springs fire up there by Bumping Lake or behind Bumping Lake. So keep them in your prayers too. There's an awful lot to pray for these days, an awful lot of people who are hurting, but um, it's our responsibility. If we can't actually go up and help them physically or monetarily, at least we can pray for them. And thanks again to all of you who are so generous and supportive, prayerfully, um, financial-wise, in all different ways, of our parish community. Within the next week or two, we'll be deciding about the times for weekday masses. There's a, there's a lot of people on one side that want to go back into um, the mornings earlier, and uh, 7 and 8, and there's equal number of people here who want to keep them at 11. 11 means, yeah, we can sleep later, but um, whatever's, whatever works, we're going to survey quite a few people in the next few weeks and decide what we're going to do about that. Um, the last streaming mass will be the first Sunday, uh, the last um, television mass, I should say, on Sunday mornings at uh, 6.30 in English and at 9 o'clock in Spanish will be... Um, the first Sunday of September. And um, then we're gonna stop that from uh, televising that from our parish, uh, the chapel. And um, I think the weekday masses, I think we'll also be stopping uh, streaming very soon too. But we'll keep up the Sunday streaming of masses at 11 o'clock in English and one o'clock in Spanish. Um, again, if you, feel sick or you, you, you have an immune system that is problematical, don't come to church. Don't feel you have to come. Let us know. We'll try to get someone to bring communion to you too. If you don't have anyone, neighbors that can do that for you, let us know. We're trying to take care of our people the best way we can. And again, if we can help you in any other way, please give us a call and know that we pray for you every single day. We pray for your good and for your that you be healthy and well, and that you persevere in your own life and practices of life. And um, I want to ask God to bless you right now as we end this uh, telecast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>